Well, hello everyone. Father Jerry, the pastor of Sacred Heart in Punta Gorda, Florida, coming to you live from my little St. Therese Oratorio in the rectory. And it's my pleasure to invite you into my home, even as you welcome me into yours on this 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Beautiful readings today. And so let's begin as we always do in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and the peace of God our Father, the immense love, the wisdom, and the joy of our resurrected and ascended Savior, Jesus the Christ, and the fellowship of their Holy Spirit be with you all. To prepare ourselves to celebrate as fully as we can this sacred and divine mystery, let's take that big spiritual breath in. And let's breathe out all of our concerns and plans and worries. Let's become simple and childlike in God's house. Let's take a second deep breath. And on the out breath, we allow that beautiful moment of silence that carries us into a reverence and an experience of the contemplative dimension of our faith. We take that third deep breath in. And on the out breath, we sink as deeply as we can into our hearts, those depths where we have given by us a sanctuary by God who longs and wishes to meet us there and to touch us in exactly the place we need him the most. Together we cry out, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the, in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who indeed lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Our respons responsorial psalm together. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. And let us repeat, I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. 
I will extol you, O my God and King, and I will bless your name forever and forever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of your glory, of your kingdom, and speak of your might. The Lord is faithful in all his works and holy in all his words. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit, if only the spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the unholy deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son but the Father, and no one knows the Father but the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, my dear friends, there is the story of um, an elderly Italian man who was lying in his deathbed and suddenly he smelled his favorite anisette sprinkled cookies. Mm. He rose from his deathbed and made his way downstairs and beheld a heavenly vision. His devoted Italian wife of 60 years old was baking away. He staggered toward the table where spread out upon waxed paper were hundreds of his favorite cookies. He reached for a cookie at the edge of the table. And when his hand was suddenly smacked by his wife with a spatula, she snapped at him, Nona touch, those for the funeral. <laughs> oh, that little story cracks me up. And uh, there she is baking away. And uh, it's kind of a 
I don't know, a story of hospitality, perhaps misplaced. She's thinking ahead, isn't she, to um, the party after the funeral. And she's missing the present moment of encounter with one of God's little ones. We heard recently that Jesus said, if you even so much as give a cup of cold water to one of God's little ones, that person will not want for the reward of love springing up from within that heart, which of course is the happiest experience that we humans can have on the earth. That elderly Italian woman's heart focused on the guests who were yet to come. Notice in the gospel of Christ that he's always present to those right in front of him and he never wavers from that. He's just been wrestling around with those Pharisees and those Sadducees, and these people who invented so many burdensome laws that Jesus is saying, um, I know, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Take my yoke, meaning my teachings upon you, and you will find life, you will find rest for yourselves, because the yoke of Jesus is easy. Indeed, it is love, love of the one right in front of you, every day, all day long. Rather than being humorous, really, that Italian little story is profound. Misplaced hospitality is inconsistent with the message of Christ. The readings today call us to be welcoming, hospitable, and caring. It is a hospitality emboldened by Christ to be one without prejudice. Christ calls us to offer God's love to any and to all we meet without regard to our differences. St. Mother Teresa summarized it well when she said these following beautiful words. No color, no religion, no nationality could ever come between us. We are all the children of God. And yet our society, our country continues to be divided by hate and by prejudice. Breaks our hearts when we turn on the news. But the question for us today in light of our beautiful gospel teaching is how are we, how am I acting? Think about this. We who have been buried with Christ in the waters of baptism need to become one with Christ by simple and common acts of love and gestures of hospitality. Remember that Christ's love is never limiting. It is expansive. It invites us to do away with our narrow-mindedness. To be attentive to the word of God is to possess a welcoming heart and a gentle spirit. Whether one is white or black or Hispanic or Asian, we are all loved by God. And God, in turn, asks us to love one another. This is taking upon yourself the yoke of Christ. You simply love. That's what you do. You do this every day in the tiniest little offer of a cup of coffee, the forwarding of a funny text or a beautiful video by calling up your family, your friends, by wearing your mask even. To put it another way, as we celebrate our July the 4th Independence Day, great weekend for our country. 
Let's listen to one of the greatest leaders, one of the most profound guiding lights in our history, Dr. Martin Luther King. He said the following, I do not believe in black power or white power, but I believe in God's power. Amen. And God's power is love. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may ex be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands for the praise and the glory of your name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set us over the whole world in all of its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim, holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fount of all holiness. Let your spirit make, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon us like the dewfall, so that these gifts may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, 
We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Frank our Bishop and all those who serve you. Remember all of those brothers and sisters of ours who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Francis, Saint Clare, Saint Therese, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Dear friends, let's pray together the beautiful prayer our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, we pray, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Dear friends, realizing I have forgotten the general intercessions, also known as the prayers of the faithful, let's in this moment of peace hold our intentions together. Praying especially for all of those suffering with the virus, those suffering from staying home too long, those in our nursing homes. Let's pray for peace in our United States on this Independence Day. Let's pray for peace for all of God's children throughout the world. Let's take that moment of silence and hold all of our intentions deeply inside and present them to the Heavenly Father. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. The Lord be with you. The beautiful blessing of our beloved St. Francis of Assisi. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he show his face to you and be gracious to you. May he reveal to you this day his providence, tenderness, and care for you and all the days of your lives. May he at this moment touch you with the grace of his peace. The Lord bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This, our celebration of the Eucharist, is now finished. We go forth in peace and in joy to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a beautiful 4th of July weekend, everyone, and uh, stay safe during the week. Please take care of yourselves and one another. And uh, it's hard to smile behind a mask, but you can still um, wink at somebody or um, make a gesture to brighten their day. Thanks so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you every Sunday, if we can. Okay, take care and God bless.